100 years ago in 1917, as the United States was preparing to enter World War I, Woodrow Wilson signed a bill into law designed to punish interference in American foreign relations and military operations, including through espionage. A century later, the Espionage Act has been repurposed to go after government whistleblowers and anyone who leaks classified information to the press. And if the trend continues, misuse of the law could cripple investigative journalism. The Espionage Act was passed by Congress to stop espionage, and it's been misinterpreted to catch reporters. In 1971, James Goodale was general counsel for the New York Times. That was the year that a military analyst named Daniel Ellsberg leaked the Pentagon Papers, a top secret chronicle of America's involvement in Vietnam, to the Times. When the Times began printing those revelations, the Nixon administration sued to prevent their publication. Goodale defended the Times in the Pentagon Papers case. No one ever thought the Espionage Act could be used against the press until Nixon decided it could. It was a big surprise. And people had forgotten that it was plucked out of the air. The Supreme Court ultimately ruled in favor of the Times. Meanwhile, Ellsberg and his colleague Anthony Russo became the first people charged under the Espionage Act for leaking to the press. The case was dismissed in 1973, and the Espionage Act wasn't really used widely against leakers again until the presidency of Barack Obama. To the surprise of many people, supporters and opponents of Obama, he famously set a record in prosecuting leakers under the Espionage Act. Usually people say that prior to Obama there were three cases, and under Obama there were three times as many. Obama uh, is at fault for using the Espionage Act to get people to leak to the press, and my concern is since Obama's done it, as soon as Trump can find leakers, he's going to do it in great volumes. In June 2017, the Trump administration launched its first Espionage Act prosecution. Reality Winner, a former Air Force service member and NSA contractor, was arrested and accused of leaking classified information to journalists. If prosecutions under the Espionage Act continue to open up, it could create major problems for both reporters and whistleblowers. The courts have ruled that in recent years that there, there is not um, a public interest defense possible under the Espionage Act. So that you cannot say, yes, I deliberately leaked classified information, but the reason was that some grave wrongdoing was going on. Edward Snowden alluded to the Espionage Act's lack of a public interest whistleblower defense as a reason he hasn't returned to the United States for trial. When you say Thomas Drake, NSA employee, is being prosecuted under the Espionage Act, to the average person, that sounds like Thomas Drake was a spy. What Thomas Drake did, whether you, whether you approve of it or disapprove of it, was completely unlike that. He thought there was some terrible mismanagement and waste of money. He had used the internal channels to complain about this stuff, didn't think he was getting anywhere, and decided to use the sort of traditional hammer of the press. That is very, very different from what the Espionage Act was traditionally used for, meaning prosecuting somebody who's given information to a foreign power. Another troubling possibility would be if the government were to use the Espionage Act to directly target journalists themselves or the news outlets that publish leaked information. If the Espionage Act is used to prosecute publishers or websites or whatever, it not only would be a chilling effect, it would be a deep freeze because publishers wouldn't want to publish any classified information or secret information because they knew they would be going to jail. The Espionage Act was not designed to get reporters. Reporters aren't committing espionage. 